spending a lot of time out there over the last couple of days. Even on the lay days, he's out there surfing it at one foot. So Connor Coffin got his hands full, but so does Wiggly Dantes. An exciting matchup on paper. Connor Coffin will be surfing cloud break on his backhand. A regular footer stands with his left foot forward, and Wiggly Dantes will be on his front side to take on one of the most beautiful waves on the planet. They're still counting 20% of their seating from last season and 80% of 2016. So Dante is still out in front counting last year's results. And a quick one here for Connor Coffin to get things started. He'll kick out. Now Dante's with priority. Yeah, a little bit of mistake there for Connor. Obviously didn't want to waste too much more time. Time was ticking away. Now he's going to pay for it with that one just getting through 28 minutes remaining. So Connor just trying to get that first roll of the dice. These guys have been waiting eight days for this, Joe. So tapping on, tapping off, keeping that energy flow not too high through the days of lay days. You've got to really make sure you get a lot of rest. It's hot here, so you can't zap your energy. You don't want to serve too long, get sunburned. It's, there's a lot of factors that come into play that will uh, really sort of come up against your performance here in this round. It's always interesting to see how the routines might change for the best surfers in the world when you know there's going to be a ton of lay days in a row. You think of Wiggly and Connor over the last eight days, and these two surfers probably surfed the most out of the top 34, and they kind of kept their routines absolutely perfect and in rhythm. Even on small days, Connor was already coming in from morning surf before anyone else was having breakfast. There's Connor once again locking in, pulling in a racetrack barrel. Backhand wrap on that shoulder. He runs out of wave, his best wave so far. Chipping away against Wiggly Dantes here. I love that low center of gravity that Connor has. Just on that wraparound cutback, knees fully bent. No extension of the legs whatsoever, keeping that rail in the water. Absolutely. I mean, it's when you're, the, when you're the guy on top and you're winning a lot, people want to see you lose. And when you're the guy who's struggling, you know, it seems like you get some, sort of more of that moral support. So it's, it's in that way, it's a fun position to be in, you know. But uh, I mean, obviously, you'd rather be winning a lot and winning all the time, but, um, you know, we all go through our struggles. I've, I've got my own struggles, and, and uh, you know, you just you find your way out of it. So There's kind of waves all over. There's actually waves deeper than the ledge. There's waves on the ledge, and then there are some wide ones, but you got to kind of pick your poison, you know, uh, and figure out where you're going to sit. I mean, everyone has seen those good ones and what they are. Uh, those are the ones you want, but you can't guarantee they're going to be a couple of those for you in 30 minutes out there on a day like today. You know, it, there's not a pure line. There's two or three swells in the water, a lot of short interval, and both guys kind of play that. Well, Kelly, four times, one event, you're keeping your run alive. Well done. Thank you, Rosie and Kelly Slater taking a big win over Jordy Smith in the last team with some amazing barrels along the way. Back to this one quickly with Wiggly Dantes. Pulling in a beautiful high line, and it's going to stay wide open for the Goofy Foot Brazilian. Slams on the brakes. This goes under the lip real quick and kicks out. So Connor starting one and then a 4-1-7. Dantes reading the barrel beautifully, looking for a 4.67. Potts, Kelly was just referring to how there are waves everywhere. He picked every section apart and said there's gems coming from different times. It's a little jumbled with the overlapping swells. How'd you like this approach from Dantes here? Yeah, well, made a mistake on his first roll of the dice, but then corrected it. This wave kind of opened up right at the end there for him to come out and then look for some more at the end. So Wiggly, definitely his best wave. He's only looking for a, a small score to get himself into that first spot. 4.67 required. Nice, tight, high tube line that he picked right there, and then it opens up for him as he comes out. So good ability there just to stay strong with his line and hold himself tight and high on that wave there. So normally cl cloud breaks so wide open, you can afford to sort of drive down a bit, but that one was all at the top of the wave, Joe. We got to catch up with Wiggly Dantes on the desk on Dawn Patrol the other morning, and it was really fun just keeping him on the desk for a few solid segments to talk about even the first wave you ever rode in your whole life. We always know it starts there, but usually we're just breaking down competitive heats for Dantes. You got to show just how much pure love he has just for riding a wave still at this stage of his career and shares it with his very talented surfing family from Ubatuba. Yeah, I mean, he's, uh, he, he just loves surfing, period. I mean, day in, day out, he's sort of one of the first guys out there and one of the last guys in. I know uh, yesterday afternoon we took us about half an hour to get him into the boat as the sun was going down. He just wanted more and more and uh, you know that's the, that's this place cloud break. It's, it's addictive and once you get one or two good ones out there that's uh, 
kind of hooked for, for hooked for life. So Dantes turns in a 5.17. We'll get a lead change there, and he's looking for another scoring ride. Pulls into the barrel, nice and deep. Tube section clamps down on Dantes, and he'll be underwater. Just needed a small score to extend his lead. Connor Coffin just looking for a 1.51. So what a great clash on paper. Goofy Foot representing Brazil. Connor Coffin, regular foot, representing Santa Barbara, California. One of the things you pick out about Connor all the time is how smooth he is. It's almost, I think, part of surfing around his turf. You have to be smooth. Style is such an important issue. When you see a, a gem out the back and it's Connor Coffin flying out of the barrel. Nice backside carve to seal the deal, but he falls on the rebound. But already Connor with a couple of great barrels to kick things off in this heat. Yeah, I mean, that was a, a nice barrel straight into it. Grabbed that rail, stuck nice and low. I love that big wraparound cutback, just catching the rail at the end of it. So the points will come from just the tube ride. Even though Connor's a rookie on tour, Joe, as you said, he's got a lot of experience out here, former boatman, so he's definitely spent a lot of time out in the water. Even just coming here as a little kid with his family, who's so young, starting to realize what this whole place was all about. He was able to live the dream at a very young age, and he was always dedicated to finding success to qualify for the top 34. Let's see how he did here. Yeah, straight into the barrel and the takeoff. Didn't really bottom turn, so just knifed it straight through the barrel, and then just that beautiful carving wraparound cutback, but then just caught that inside rail and went down. So a little bit of a mistake there for Connor. It's one of those things where it's kind of like, uh, I don't know, Gilligan's Isle meets uh, Peter Pan. It's like you just have so much fun, and you never grow up, and you just keep it going. And right now he's having a blast out in the lineup. You know, obviously with Wilco winning those two first events, um, yeah, it, I think uh, I've just got to kind of get back on track, start making the quarters and above if I want to start chasing down any sort of title. Um, but at the, yeah, I feel like my surfing's great. Equipment's really been really good. Um, heading to J-Bay next, so that should be a... Uh, a good one for me. Hopefully I can kind of, you know, dial in a few things before there and yeah, I guess just take every day as it comes, chip away and, and you know, come at the end of the year, Portugal and Pop, just kind of have a look at then and, and assess it. Now into his second year on tour, he feels kind of more like a seasoned veteran when you look at the list of big names he's taken down in such a short time. Wiggly now is up and he just pulls up and out, so loses priority and still needs a 5.84. This inside bowl lights up, and as this thing goes down, it's going to do it. You can see Wiggly, he looks like he's gotten rolled out the back in these whitewater bowls, though he's got himself a little nugget. He's trying to find some cover. He's going to come through the corner and sweep out. But on the outside, you know, it, I'm not too sure what it's looking like, but on the inside, there's some growers, some absolute gems in here. And let me tell you, if uh, those things keep coming through, I saw Adriano eyeing those things up along with Keanu. So he's, these guys are definitely paying attention to the movement and the lineup. It is just so beautiful out here right now. The conditions could not be any better. Uh, two swells running though, so it's making it a really tough gamble on where to be. Thank you very much, Strider Wazalewski from the channel. Surfline let us know that we have this southwest kind of mid-period swell filling in today. And we also have a real short period south swell to kind of make it a little jumbled up at times, but looking nice and groomed for the back end of Connor Coffin on this one. Drills it again off the top, two solid backside hooks. Now out in front to carve through once again. Connor kicks out with 440 remaining, and he's trying to improve on a 4.17 with those big backside blows. We were just in Brazil for the last stop, and some of the old school vets used to say sometimes their first experience at a venue was in the heat of competition, trying to learn on the fly. Now we have seven new rookies, all seven well-traveled, and they know how to surf in all sorts of conditions, and I think that is a testament to when you look at the Jeep leaderboard to see all these young names. Well, he gave us a thumbs up, but the leash didn't make it through. You know, the inside corner out here, it's no joke, and that set came through, rolled through. He was actually right underneath the double up where it just went square on his head, um, and he was definitely taking a breath. But out the back, you can just see how perfect the waves are. And on the inside here, it's unloading on the reef, the equipment. Well, let's just say it's powerful out here, strong enough to break some leashes and take a couple boards with it. Thank you very much, Strider. We know how powerful it is out there. We just had a radical exchange out the back with Connor and Wiggly Dantes. 
Kelly said he was concerned to see who's going to try to man position to start. We know positioning is so important to make sure you're on the best waves of the day. Connor's still with the lead and trying to keep it against Dantes. But, but will he get an interference on that last exchange? Well, he was on the inside. Wiggly had priority. Wiggly paddled for the wave. They crossed paths. Now, that's not good. Just from experience with that interference rule, if you cross the path of the guy that's got priority, he's kind of hindering his scoring potential. Wiggly failed to stand up. Let's have a look at it again in slow motion. Connor Coffin paddling for it. I don't know whether he realizes or not that Wiggly's got priority. See how he goes in front of Wiggly? Wiggly tries to stand up and gets pitched. So that was uh, Connor Coffin at fault right there, unfortunately. You just don't want to get involved in those situations, Joe. The judge is still deliberating on that whole situation. I'm sure they looked at that again. And it's, it hasn't been locked in yet, but it's not good signs for Connor. So Connor Coffin at the moment is showing that he has priority. Still no call yet from upstairs. Obviously, we've seen interferences of the old days run free if there's no hindrance in scoring potential. Yeah, For you, Potts, are you making a quick call there? Yeah, I mean, it's to me, it's kind of a, you know, even though Wiggly didn't stand up, there was that, that sort of cross, crossing of paths. And, you know, just experience tells me that that wasn't a good thing. You know, Connor's still got, I mean, he's got priority. If he dropped something better than a 694, he could still win this heat. See right there, kind of threw Wiggly off a little bit and then Wiggly went down, so. Now Wiggly standing up on a final wave as we are closing out this seat. So far, Connor still positioned in the lead, but judges are reviewing some tapes. So stand by for the final outcome of round three, heat number five. We wow. knew this heat was gonna be epic. We talked about it with Wiggly on the morning show. Connor's been out there ready to compete each and every day. He's looking comfortable and happy, but it com could come down to that final exchange. So still standing by for that call. Is. And it looks like it will be in. We yep. did get an interference on Connor Coffin. That'll take him down to second. Wiggly Dantes wow. to first on the priority decision. I mean, that was something. I mean, Connor didn't need to do that. Uh, that wave kind of looked like it shut down anyway. And that was just one of those things that you just try and stay right away from. I mean, Connor had that thing in the bag. 